the idea is to invite the coordinator of working group eight and then to invite some of the past chairs to give some some comments uh, i'd like to uh, just uh, pay attention because Professor Capus has to leave in 15 minutes. So um, I invite now the coordinator of work, work group eight, Professor Mario de Stefford, but please uh, introduce as soon as possible Professor Capus because he, he has to leave, okay? Organizers of uh, workshops to uh, make their comments. Uh, okay, the sequence was a bit different, but so since uh, uh, I think that it's good that we start with uh, uh, Professor Capos, uh, if uh, Andreas, if you like to give us some remarks, uh, also you are the Director General of the European Association of Earthquake Engineering, so you are in the good position to give us your remarks. Thank you very much, Mario. Thank you. Um, I have heard of so much uh, praise for the organizers, uh, Rita and uh, her team, that I will not repeat it uh, again. Um, I, I would like to start with, um, with um, the format that we have followed um, uh, this time, which, of course, uh, uh, by definition, misses the person-to-person -person contact that we had. Uh, and I hope that um, I have reminded this uh, to you with uh, the few pictures uh, from the uh, physical contact uh, uh, workshop that I have shown. Um, dear colleagues, uh, even if this awful virus uh, goes away and we forget about him, uh, we, we will not forget about online conferences and webinars. I think um, they are here to stay. And uh, my, well, easy, I would say, prediction is that um, um, they will be used also when we return back to normal or to the new normal, whatever this, um, this will be, which is good and bad. Um, it is um, good in the sense that it will be much easier to have uh, archives of the uh, presentations which we can make uh, in line with the current trends. Um, um, open access or free access um, uh, to people, but of course uh, um, it will um, reduce the, the chunk of uh, the whole thing that um, has to do with person-to-person -person, um, conduct. Um, let me now make um, a couple of comments on the uh, workshop itself. Uh, uh, I wasn't able to attend all of it, but I have um, attended uh, quite a few sessions, so I think I have an idea and I also had a look at the, at the proceedings. Um, regarding the topics, let me uh, point out uh, myself uh, sharing my research uh, time between um, the two major civil structures, which is uh, uh, buildings and bridges, that uh, um, I was a little bit um, unhappy to see that uh, once again the, uh, the distribution is very, very uneven. Uh, there were only, if I have not missed something, there were only two papers on uh, irregular or complex bridges, and uh, the rest of it was more or less, um, uh, more or less building. So, since, uh, as I uh, as I see on the list of uh, participants, we have quite a few young, or relatively young engineers among us, I would like to encourage you uh, to deal more with bridges. Uh, if not for anything else, because it is much, much easier to, uh, in a sense, to make um, a, a new contribution, not necessarily novel, but at least new contribution to bridges, uh, to irregular bridges, for example, than to buildings. I mean, um, most of the presentations and the papers were very good, but uh, I, I had a, a déjà vu feeling uh, with uh, some of them. I mean, again, um, trying to verify code equations regarding irregularity criteria and so on for buildings. But uh, you know how, how many open questions uh, still remain regarding, for example, irregular, uh, ir irregular bridges? I think uh, these deserve a, a little bit more of attention. So this would be a recommendation on my uh, part. Um, and uh, last uh, from, my, uh, from my side, uh, 
I, I very much liked, um, well, I, I liked um, both um, uh, keynote lectures, but um, I, I very much liked something that was said. Do we really have um, uh, regular buildings if we apply the code criteria? And my personal feeling is that um, uh, if you apply the code criteria to real building as opposed to the so-called academic uh, uh, structure with equal spans, uh, uh, constant uh, cross-sections along the height and so on, you will almost never end up with, uh, with a, a, re a regular real building. So um, I'm not very familiar and I will have a look at it in um, uh, a closer look at it in due course with the uh, recent um, changes in um, in the Eurocode 8 criteria, but I think we should be uh, a little bit more realistic regarding this. I mean, my feeling, uh, based on what I know and what I have uh, seen, is that the stiffness criteria should sooner or later vanish, and if we want to define irregularity, we should concentrate more on strength irregularity than on um, any stiffness criteria which uh, will render very regular structures into irregular ones. Uh, I think I'll stop here because we have quite a few other um, uh, organizers. Uh, as I said, I enjoyed very much uh, when I um, organized the 2005 uh, conference, but I equally enjoyed to a certain extent uh, uh, this online uh, uh, workshop and uh, once again, uh, uh, my warmest uh, wishes uh, and my thanks uh, to the organizing uh, committee and of course um, to Rita uh, most of all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andreas. Yeah. You gave us uh, uh, very useful remarks. So I join you in uh, uh, promoting the research in uh, Austin Bridges and uh, also this issue of criteria for uh, regularity or irregularity. Can I have, yeah. I, I, I'd, like, I'd like to add two comments regarding the Andres uh, yes, uh, comment. Yes, yes, yes. One of them is probably you are trying to cap to, to some young research from this group, your group of bridges. I'm joking with you. <laughs> uh, the other thing is that according to the codes, we are not uh, compo it is not compulsory to design regular structures. And sometimes uh, due to some uh, architectural requirements, we are not able to design new structures, regular ones. So this is a topic that I think we still need to, to do some more research and try to somehow um, proposing some structural system to reduce the, the, the regularities that somehow are imposed to us from the architectural design. So this is just a final comment about this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your, your words. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas, again. So uh, you were organizing 2005, 2008 was organized by Aurelio Gessi. Uh, I don't see him. But he, he is with us. He is with us. Uh, yes. Aurelio. I am here. Ah, Aurelio, so. Hello. Uh, I, I was asking, I sent you email. I don't know whether you got it. Uh, so, please, if you want to give us some remarks, we we'll take note of your remarks, of course. Well, <laughs> um, I think that uh, what Rita uh, Bento says about uh, the need of uh, studying also uh, the behavior of irregular buildings uh, may be important, but only for a uh, few cases, because if it is possible, uh, I would like to uh, design uh, regular buildings. I say uh, most of buildings uh, are designed by normal uh, engineers, uh, which are a, uh, uh, good, but not so good. So they should do only regular buildings. To make something uh, really irregular for architectural uh, reasons, we need uh, uh, very uh, good engineers, not usual engineer. Standard buildings should be regular. This is a, a good uh, way to avoid uh, really uh, high uh, dam damages uh, uh, in case of uh, uh, seismic events. Uh, 
as regards the, the criteria of uh, codes, uh, uh, I think that uh, we have to work to find uh, uh, criteria which are really effective. Uh, um, as, a, as an example, the steepness criteria of, of Eurocode 8, uh, I think, are, are not working, uh, are not useful in this way. They were not provided uh, for the, uh, the, uh, the nonlinear behavior for reduction uh, Q factor, but for other reasons. So they are uh, not so uh, good as criteria. Well, nothing else. <laughs> Thank you, Aurelio. So uh, I really agree that, uh, as I was saying before, the criteria for regularity uh, should be uh, reviewed and based also on some uh, scientific uh, background studies. So sometimes they, they seem to be based more on engineering judgment than uh, on uh, uh, real evaluation of the effect. Um, okay, so uh, the 2011 was uh, uh, Oren. So, some uh, Oren, please give us some remarks about uh, the workshop. And you should allow him to talk. Yes, thank you. So, well, in my view, regular buildings only appear in textbooks. I tend to agree with Andreas on that. Uh, the point is, I think that for many buildings, we still can manage with approximate analysis. But for some buildings, uh, quite a few, I think we need to push engineers to adopt more uh, suitable analysis. Uh, more suitable in some cases it's nonlinear. Uh, in many cases we can manage with nonlinear static, um, either the uh, N2 method or the extended N2 method that works for many buildings or other pushover based methods. Uh, I think that uh, well my first uh, work the first workshop that I attended was in Thessaloniki. And I remember that I was uh, uh, about to graduate my PhD, and I remember asking myself, how come engineers don't use nonlinear analysis? And uh, I think that if we keep on giving them the opportunity to use linear analysis, they would never go with nonlinear analysis. We need to teach that. We need to uh, um, uh, encourage the use of nonlinear analysis. Uh, because if we don't start in 20 years from now, we will sti still be at the same point. Uh, I think that the way to encourage that could be to lower the Q factors unless someone goes with a nonlinear analysis. And then, so the linear analysis would lead to conservative designs, very conservative designs. And if the engineer would go with a nonlinear analysis, he would be, have the benefit of um, designing cheaper structures in terms of cost. Uh, so I think this is the way to go. I had some discussions with senior engineers in Israel, uh, and then they were against nonlinear analysis because they did not know how to do them. But when I asked them, OK, so do you really understand model analysis? And then they said, yes, everybody uses them. Uh, and I said, you know, pressing a button is not understanding the analysis. Uh, I think that, I honestly think that static nonlinear analysis is much more intuitive and easier to understand for senior engineers than model analysis because I don't think that they uh, usually, most of them, don't understand the mathematics behind it and the physics behind it. So I think that nonlinear static analysis is actually easier to understand uh, uh, in terms of the way our intuition is built. Uh, I think that uh, uh, this opens for this uh, work group um, actually other directions. We always talk about the analysis, but an important thing is the design. Uh, the code tells engineers what their structure, what their design needs to qualify. Uh, the code doesn't tell the engineers how to come up with a good structure that would qualify the code criteria 
uh, with, with minimum cost or with good behavior. And I think that this is so something that we should strengthen. Uh, another thing that we need to strengthen is retrofitting because um, I looked yesterday evening uh, uh, at the uh, population growth in Europe. And there are quite a few countries where the population growth is not positive. This means that there are many old buildings that need retrofitting uh, in some places rather than new buildings to be built. So dealing with the retrofitting of existing buildings, irregular buildings is, in, is an important um, uh, target by itself that the uh, workshop I think should uh, uh, go for. And another thing that we saw in this workshop was the use of advanced technologies, uh, base isolation, rocking behavior, fluid viscous dampers, hysteretic dampers. And I think that especially in irregular structures, uh, these have a good uh, chance of, uh, or a good advantage when used both for retrofitting and for the design of, of uh, new structures. So I think that these are the challenge, challenges that we should take uh, uh, and, and to try again to push engineers to use more suitable analysis uh, for, for uh, certain classes of buildings. Thank you, Oren. Uh, I also Can believe I say something, Mario? Yes. Can I say something uh, apropos of what uh, Oren said? Yes, yes, go ahead, go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, in, um, on the note of um, a nostalgia that I mentioned uh, the other day, um, I, I will never forget um, the BLED conference, I think it was in uh, 1997, where I have presented, um, I think it was for the first time, this um, a new method of um, a design based on nonlinear dynamic um, uh, analysis and um, uh, apropos of what um, um, Oren said regarding the use of proper um, uh, analysis, uh, I remember very well the reaction of our good uh, friend and um, founder of uh, the group on irregular complex structures, Victor Rudevog. He said, "Non-linear dynamic analysis over my dead body." That was his exact words, and I was I should say that I'm very very happy that. On one hand, nonlinear dynamic analysis, also after the recent developments in, um, uh, uh, in the US with uh, AC7 and uh, so on, is very, very close to becoming a reality. On the other hand, Victor, of course, is very well and very much alive. Thank you. Yes. So on that note, if I may say something, uh, for code purposes, I would prefer, prefer using nonlinear static analysis for most cases. Sure. Because nonlinear dynamic analysis requires expertise that uh, I don't think most engineers have. So if you take two engineers and give them the st same structure uh, and let them uh, um, uh, do nonlinear uh, dynamic analysis, they could get totally different results. But with nonlinear static, I think that more or less they will be on the same ballpark. Yeah. Yes, but nonlinear static must be adjusted for uh, irregular structures and still there is that, that, That's true. Done. So, so this is what we're... Otherwise, you, and you, can be, you can underestimate uh, this fact. But anyway, I, so... I agree. So this is where research should go. Yes. So, um, so in 2014, uh, uh, Zibinia was the... Uh, Organizer, but I don't think uh, I think that the being had to leave, so he's not uh, with us now. And so we skip to uh, uh, 2017. Dietrinde, Dietrinde Kober organized the workshop in Bucharest three years ago. So if you can give us some remarks, some consideration. We don't hear you. Okay. Evening to everybody. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's uh, nice to meet again, although in this online uh, type event, I would like also to say that I believe also that after this curious period we are passing through, online events will be still needed and will be still uh, encouraged to take place. 
I've seen uh, this workshop and it was uh, very good organized and I would like to thank on this uh, occasion also the organizing committee for the good job it has done. I believe all of the speakers were present, which I don't think may happen in a real event. In real events, actually, the last session is quite unexistent or often unexistent. And uh, this is one advantage. Uh, although, naturally, we do not meet, uh, we cannot share uh, impressions directly and we cannot have uh, conference dinners and other events which usually are and give us another touch of, of, of human being and uh, have their naturally uh, bring us a lot of, of joy. But um, regarding the content of, of the nine e-weeks and actually of our work group, I believe, let's say, I, I will do a comparison. I believe one is the fact that we need to have research and we need to upgrade our, our codes. And the other thing is that a lot of engineers, of practical engineers, need to deal day by day with all sorts of structures and they usually don't have time or don't take their time because time costs money yeah? for a practical engineer. He has very um, limited uh, possibilities to, to come along with complex behaviors, to learn during practice, I don't know, new or better approaches, design approaches. So I believe the more complex codes will get, although they come along with safety requirements which are needed, the less they will be accepted or acknowledged by practice. That's my point of view regarding my experience in this field. I'm also a practical engineer, so I deal with to the problems and with all, all sorts of and and, and um, all sorts of ages of, of engineers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dietrinde. So uh, we have a short time, but I I would like if, uh, to ask if anybody has a short uh, short uh, remark. Uh, uh, because otherwise, I think Gustavo yes. wanted to say Gustavo something. Gustavo wants to say something. Yes, I, want I think to that say he wants something. to say something. Thank Gustavo, you want to give us some remarks? Thank, thank you very much, Andreas. Uh, hello to everybody. Um, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to participate in this uh, type of meetings with you. And uh, I've been talking to some of you about uh, some uh, uh, thoughts uh, of where we should go in the future. Uh, I agree with uh, Andreas uh, that uh, we, we got to look uh, into other type of structures, not only buildings, but uh, we should not forget that uh, still now, we don't have solved the problem of designing in irregular building. Irregular in the strict sense of the word. We know that all buildings are irregular. Only irregular buildings appear in books. But uh, definitely, when we look at the statistics of the damage caused by recent and past earthquakes around the world, the buildings that have suffered and even collapsed are buildings that somehow some, some degree of irregularity. Uh, the fact that we are still now designing a building irregular in many different aspects as a linear structure, when we are considering that the behavior for which we are designing the, that building is uh, deep into the non-linear range of behavior, it makes us wonder, are we doing it right? When we look into that, I don't think we are doing it right. Yeah, we got to look and find a solution that leads us to methods that really we get the design forces for the structure that we actually have in front of us, not for the structure we hope to be. Yeah, to have, I'm sorry. So this is something that I would very much insist 
and uh, we've been working with Mario and some of other colleagues in trying to find the ways of not really uh, breaking that uh, uh, fallacy that we can use non-linearity as a design method because to design a structure using a non-linear method, we need the design. We can use non-linear methods to evaluate our designs. We cannot change the, that fact. We want to know the design before we do a non-linear analysis. So non-linear analysis I supported as a it's a method of evaluation and confirming that our designs are correct, but not really a, a, to a start a design. We got to keep up with what we know and what we know now, and it's in every uh, design studio, are the, non, uh, the model spectral analysis. But we got what we got to do with our model spectral analysis for nonlinear structures so that the design forces that we find correspond to the reality or structures. That is something that we got to look into it and work towards it. I, I, I leave that on the table for discussion and I'm open to any, any comment or disagreement with this uh, statement. Thank you. Thank you, Gustavo. Uh, if there is any other remark, I want to say something, uh, but very short. I want to make also this issue of codes is very important uh, also to help uh, the designers. So the issue, for example, of the Q factor for regular structures. There are new, there is a new version now that is under consideration, but uh, the point is that, uh, okay, you give a, a smaller Q factor to account for irregularity, but then you don't, uh, you distribute this over strength blindly, whereas you should put it in, give it to the, in the right place, okay? So there is one point, for example. So I think that really the, 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 the specifications for irregular structures in code, not only Euro code, but also other international codes are in need of improvement from many point of view. And uh, okay. So I, um, so Rita will give us, so is there anybody who wants to? Sorry, I have the pit for a lot. Asimina, I am Asimina. Asimina. Yes, 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 go ahead, please. Okay, I have two brief comments. One uh, concerning the static pushover analysis. Uh, we have to uh, have in mind that uh, this is an approximate method without some background. So it needs very, very attention, and we should very carefully just the results of the method. It gives many information about uh, the structures, but it is a very approximate method, uh, especially concerning the 3D irregular in plan or in elevation buildings. The second comment concerns the nonlinear dynamic analysis. We have um, a very strong computers, but uh, we need uh, how many accelerograms? How the scaling of the accelerograms uh, has to be done? Uh, how we choose the accelerograms? And, uh, many, many other questions about uh, the uh, uh, application of nonlinear dynamic analysis. Uh, it uh, needs attention. Thank, thank you, Asimina. Yes, uh, 
to summarize is, is uh, must be used carefully, especially with uh, regular structures and uh, so on. You made a good point. And the, so if there are other remarks, I'm sure everybody of you will want to give a remark, but um, okay, Oren. Eduardo, Eduardo. Okay, yes. Okay, may I talk? Okay, okay I, I have just one uh, remark and uh, uh, it is related to this. Uh, when I joined the first time to this group, it was in 1999, uh, to this workshop, I remember that the, most of the papers uh, were on the design of new buildings or, or, or the design of new structures. But uh, in this edition of the workshop, I have seen that an important part of the, of the scientific production regards uh, the assessment of existing buildings and uh, uh, the development of uh, uh, retrofit for solution for existing buildings. I think this is a good news. I think this is uh, um, a good uh, uh, way to, to be followed because uh, two reasons. One is that uh, uh, in the future, this can help the workshop uh, to survive, to, to, to give all of us uh, to do research that can be useful to the society. And also because I think that uh, existing buildings are the real irregular buildings, are buildings that exist, we cannot change, you have to accept that irregularity, and then we have to do something to overcome that irregularity. So I think this uh, scientific community is very qualified to uh, study in the, this field. And uh, then I hope that uh, uh, even in the future, uh, these, uh, uh, these topics, all these topics will be uh, investigated and uh, will uh, found a, a house, a home in this, uh, in this conference. That's what I wanted Thanks. to say. Thank you. Order? Yes, Mario, one thing about the uh, analysis again, uh, pushover analysis is, is not perfect. We, we know that, but I, in my sense, it's the best compromise uh, between, you know, uh, as Albert Einstein, I, Einstein said, uh, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. Unfortunately, I think that for many buildings, uh, linear analysis is on the simpler side. Uh, uh, where we don't grasp many important physical phenomena. So I think pushover uh, uh, is the best compromise currently. And um, another thing is I think that without teaching it at the universities, it will not catch. If we just put it in codes, it will not go. Engineers would resist it and will not use it. Uh, I've been teaching it in undergraduate classes of earthquake engineering uh, for the li last 12 years. Uh, I think that this is the way to go. And I hope that uh, uh, many of you will teach that in, in classes in, in universities. And then it will be much easier to, to enforce that in codes because many engineers uh, in practice would actually know what we talk about. May, may I hear the comments on this? Yes, please, Rita. Yes, so basically, Related to what Eduardo Heffer and Oren Heffer, I think we should uh, concentrate on this exactly. So I think we can contribute it in a way trying to retrofitting our structures, uh, somehow, of course, uh, reducing all the irregularities that the existing structures will have. Uh, last year, 2019, finally, in our, uh, it, we, it uh, arrived in for Portugal new codes, which um, uh, oblige the, everyone who do uh, some intervention in existing building has to do a vulnerability seismic vulnerability assessment of the building. And in case that the safety is not satisfied, we have to design uh, the retrofitting solutions. For most of our masonry buildings, 
which we have uh, timber floors, so flexible fo floors, according to the current Aerocode 8, we cannot use uh, nonlinear dynamic response spectral analysis. So you have to move to nonlinear uh, procedures, to nonlinear static procedures. And being aware about this new code and the, 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 the needs from the, the engineering, the practice engineers about to learn the new methods of nonlinear pushover analysis, we start in our university proposing some training courses. So we did one last year and then we stopped because of COVID-19. But even today during this workshop, I propose three more courses for practice engineering for the seismic assessment of mainstream buildings, trying to learn how to model uh, nonlinear behavior and how to consider the seismic assessment of existing builds according to nonlinear static analysis. This is completely in line what Oren just mentioned. And I think we, the people who are working in the university, needs to um, training our uh, design uh, engineering, uh, our, uh, the people who are in the design office to move on and to learn about the nonlinear static analysis. You are exactly in that line. And so I think this is the, the future, at least for the existing building. So this is undoubtedly the, 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 the solution for the seismic assessment of existing structures. I have a, a final from my part comment. It's good that you are remaining here. You very yeah, good. yeah. I, I mean, I was planning uh, to leave because it's very late here, but um, I, it was so interesting the discussion that um, I was enticed to uh, <laughs> to be late to my next meeting. Um, I think uh, we um, should look a little bit more carefully at what happens um, on the other side of the Atlantic. Uh, you being uh, most of you being in Europe now. Um, the winds are changing. If you look carefully at what happened in the ASC 7 code, the last version a couple of years um, ago, uh, for the first time they are including very specific uh, guidelines on the use of nonlinear dynamic analysis of uh, uh, buildings. Plus, of course, uh, some background papers which were published in Earthquake Spectra again a couple of years ago by Hazelton, Stewart and, um, and many others. Uh, the reason why nonlinear static analysis was not used until uh, the last uh, perhaps decade um, or so was uh, exactly the, the lack of practical guidance, guidance to the practice and engineer. And of course, to, 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 to tell it very clearly and very openly, the, the lack of appropriate software. I think we're reaching the stage that we do not need to refine still further pushover analysis to remedy the its shortcomings that were mentioned and that uh, were the, the, and uh, which are well established. Yes, we know that when higher modes are dominant, uh, we cannot use a standard type of um, uh, pushover um, uh, analysis, but. Uh, on the other hand, making pushover analysis too complicated by using methods like the one I have promoted personally for uh, bridges and other people, many other people have used for buildings as well, like model pushover, adaptive pushover, and uh, so on. We are making the whole procedure more complicated than uh, standard nonlinear dynamic um, uh, analysis. So uh, my feeling and also my prediction, if I may, is that uh, it, the time is not very far from now that um, in many cases, particularly for assessment, of course, and much less so for uh, a design for the reasons that uh, were already explained, um, nonlinear dynamic analysis will not be something uh, for, the, for, the distant, um, uh, for the distant future. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. Aurelio, please. Is we cannot hear you. No, and because they should unmute your guys. Now you can hear me. Yeah. Yes. Okay, very good. No. No, no, no. no. You are not unmuted yet. 
okay? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. I really believe that uh, uh, nonlinear static or dynamic uh, methods are re really useful. But we have to remember that uh, practical engineers uh, are different from us. I see many engineers which have software, put some data uh, then, uh, I, I'm thinking mainly about design of new structures. And the, the program this, this is not good. And they change some things without uh, knowing what they are doing, just a uh, uh, section, uh, uh, the size of an element. And they try and try and try until the, the program says, is it, good? is it good? They do not understand what they are doing, even with the static analysis. So for people of this kind, uh, nonlinear analysis, even nonlinear static analysis is a black box they not understand. You have to remember this. Uh, I have seen terrible things. Just for an example, uh, and the code cannot provide, uh, cannot think about anything. Do you imagine that if you have a, 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 a reinforced concrete column, uh, 30 centimeters for uh, 70, 80 in one direction. At the floor, they turn it uh, 90 degrees. And then otherwise uh, in the other direction, the software does not check the, the stress transmission uh, between two columns which are uh, in different stories uh, uh, rotated. And the program says, is it good? And the engineers makes it so. When I say this, I have nothing else uh, to add to this. With some people, the more complex is the way of doing, the worse they will do, not best. So I am able to do uh, nonlinear analysis. I make uh, uh, work groups uh, about this. I try to uh, induce engineers to use it properly, but not for every engineer. Otherwise, uh, uh, it will be terrible. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so uh, thanks, uh, Aurelio. Of course, we have also to look at the future, but uh, the situation is uh, mostly like uh, you, uh, you say, at least in Italy. Uh, so uh, I think, so Rita will make her remarks at the end. And uh, uh, I want just to give some organization now information. Uh, first of all, uh, membership. Membership, so uh, all uh, participants are uh, by default, are, um, by default automatically become member of uh, WG8, so we will have a list membership list and so uh, all of you are, uh, will be in the list of uh, WG8 members. The second information is very important is the book. The book, you know that uh, at the end, uh, maybe also Rita will tell you something, but the book uh, so is an important activity of our working group. Uh, because as you know, we will collect revised and upgraded versions of our papers also based on the discussions that uh, we had during this workshop and we complete uh, uh, our papers and uh, these papers will be collected and will be revised, uh, reviews, uh, reviewed, will be reviewed. Uh, um, so uh, there is a editing process that uh, will start in, in a few days. Uh, as you remember, usually the local organizer is the first editor, myself is the second editor, and I asked also the uh, Bigne to be the third editor, uh, because the Bigne has a lot of experience and also very good relationship with uh, Springer. So this is very helpful during the, so if you don't mind, the three editors will be Rita, myself, and, uh, 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 and uh, the Bigne. Uh, and so hopefully in, uh, uh, the uh, editing process would be a bit, uh, uh, shorter than the one before. And I want to thank uh, the Dietrin, that was very, very effective in the, uh, for the past uh, book, uh, for the publication of the past book, because there was uh, some time mismatch 
match and uh, also with Springer uh, it was not uh, immediate uh, everything didn't go smoothly uh, so uh, the thing that they did a great job and uh, so uh, uh, in some few days I think that with uh, uh, Rita uh, and uh, Zbigniew will send you an email and we will uh, give you instruction uh, uh, also we will uh, uh, you will need also to adjust your paper to according to the uh, Springer format that we will send you and uh, uh, we will give you a deadline to submit revised papers it will be uh, 15th of February then we will start the reviewing process and then uh, it will take some time because of course reviewers will make their uh, remarks and you will have to uh, deal with uh, uh, those remarks and uh, uh, then your the paper will be approved and then the publication process will start so it will take some time but uh, uh, i'm uh, 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 I trust this time it will be a shorter time with respect to the previous one. And uh, uh, so it's important activity of our uh, working, working group. So as I said this morning, we, was, uh, we started thanking and uh, congratulating Rita for the excellent organization of this uh, uh, workshop. And it has been uh, excellent until the end. Uh, so, the, uh, some, some of us started thinking that uh, we should ask uh, Rita to uh, organize uh, the next one, but on site. There are two reasons, uh, two reasons why we are, uh, I think that all of us uh, think that, that is good and appropriate location. First of all, uh, the fact that uh, really there was a perfect organization. And uh, second of all, we don't want to give up to the coronavirus. Okay, so if the, the virus did not allow us to, uh, to gather personally and to get together, uh, we don't give up and uh, we, uh, we are sure that in three years time, we will uh, uh, get rid of the problem, hopefully, hopefully. And so we, I would like uh, to propose Rita, uh, if uh, she, of course, is a, a, a is a very uh, tiring activity, is a uh, lot of activity, and it gets also very tired. And I know also that Rita is very busy, so. Uh, uh, I think it's not the best time to propose one thing. Accept, but I, oh, I trust uh, to get a positive answer. Maybe she will give us the answer when, uh, okay, so when she will give us uh, the final remarks. And uh, I wanted also to, uh, to stress the importance of our research activity and uh, uh, also, you got from other, uh, uh, from previous uh, uh, organizers, uh, a lot of uh, hints uh, how to uh, develop our research. Uh, definitely, I want to add another keyword, which is misery. I told this morning, misery. Also, we should also uh, look at misery buildings uh, that uh, really present, especially when they are. Uh, aggregate buildings, they present various types of irregularity. But uh, as you know, that uh, criteria for irregularity, design, design retrofitting, and uh, new technology, innovative techniques are, uh, of course, uh, area of uh, uh, interest for research. And my final, final, up, uh, my final recommendation is that really this uh, WG8, uh, this uh, Working group can be also a platform to promote some uh, joint research, uh, also to apply for EU funding. Uh, not, I don't think, I don't think the, uh, that all uh, participants, but let's say groups of participants can gather and can apply for uh, 
for uh, new funding and uh, so hopefully this will be also a uh, uh, good uh, outcome of this uh, uh, workshop. Uh, so with this, I uh, thank again the Rita and all members of the organizing committee, and uh, uh, I leave her, uh, the final words. Okay, thank you. So just before the final words, two previous comments regarding the book. We'll receive an email in a couple of days or next week uh, asking for your contribution whenever we receive the template from the Springer. So we, we have already more or less decided the deadline. Uh, so you receive the email to, to, to the, to the, for you to prepare the, the papers for the Springer book. Regarding this uh, invitation <laughs> uh, for the organization of the following workshop, I think it's not a correct time to invite it. We are in the middle <laughs> of the organization. Uh, but anyway, it was very nice. It's a, a kind of um, recognition of what we are doing because uh, if you are not doing a good, a good work, certainly were not invited to organize the next one. So thank you for, for um, your words. Uh, we will respond in a couple of days. Okay, let's just finishing and closing this session. Thank you so much for, for enjoying uh, the event. It was a pleasure for all of us. Um, we'll let you know very soon, okay? Uh, so the very, Let's move to the last part, um, which I decide to leave to the very end, of course. Uh, and of course, I'd like to thank you all, uh, the audience. Thank you so much for joining, for joining this workshop. Uh, it's amazing, as the Ethelin mentioned, all articles were presented, even the last session, so it's not very common. Uh, you start the, a little bit shy, your participation, but uh, then we began to participate, showing your interest and passion for the topic. Uh, and it was a privilege hearing from you. Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you to all the authors. Some did not join us, so we were not presenting in the workshop, but I would like to thank, to thank all of them. Uh, the speakers, of course, the shared scientific committee of the event and uh, the technical support of the workshop. Thank you all. It was amazing. You have been all the time uh, available to cooperate with us. So it was really very, very nice. Last but not least, of course, I, I'd like to thank to all the members of the organizing committee. Uh, you all have been amazing. My team, uh, fantastic, uh, uh, and you will know how I appreciated our dedication and hard work. So it was amazing to have a team like you work with me. So it was really uh, a pleasure. Thank you all. See you soon. Have a nice, keep safe. Nice, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year for you all. Thank you. Thank you, and let's make uh, even if it's. Uh... Something. Thank you. <laughs> Very it's nice. The first and the last applause that we make, but uh, we, <laughs> it's important to make it even if uh, we are so distant. So, thank you to everybody, and uh, let's keep in touch. That's important. Uh, it will be nice. very important to keep in touch. Nice. Okay, bye. See you. See you soon. Thank you. Thank bye, you so much. Bye. 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 bye, you all. Bye, you all. Thank you.